a charged isolated conductor. A charged isolated conductor. Gauss law permits us to prove an important theorem about isolated conductors. If an extra charge is placed on the isolated conductor, that amount of charge will move entirely to the surface of the conductor. None of the extra charge will be found within the body of the conductor. This is a conductor. We see inside the conductor no free charge. Why? Now, I can make a Gaussian surface just around the surface, okay? Because the E inside the conductor is zero. So the integration E dot dA must be zero. So the Q inside is zero. Where the, where the charge is all charge on the surface. Okay, E inside zero. If it's not, okay, this is a fact. Then, then we will find that there's a current inside because conductor, you have a carrier, you can move around, okay? But that's not a fact. So E inside is zero, this is a fact, okay? We place a Gaussian surface just inside the actual surface of the conductor. Okay. And then we do, that's what, this E equals zero, this is zero, so that Q in code is zero. Okay. This is a, there's no charge inside the conductor. An isolated conductor with a KVT is the same. Even you have a KT, it's inside, it must be zero Q, okay? This Wimshurst machine is an electrostatic generator which produces approximately 100,000 volts. We'll use it to put a charge on this metal pail. Now that we've put some charge on the pail, we'll use this metal sphere on a plastic rod to find out how the charge is distributed. Where will we find the charge? On the inside surface of the pail, the outside surface, or both? Touching the sphere to the inside surface and then to the electroscope shows that there is no charge on the inside surface of the pail. Touching the sphere to the outside surface and then to the electroscope shows that the charge is all on the outside surface. The external electric field. You have seen that the extra charge You have seen that excess charge on the isolated conductor moves entirely to the conductor surface. However, unless the conductor is spherical, the charge does not distribute itself uniformly. Put another way, the surface charge density sigma, charge per unit area, varies over the surface of any non-spherical conductor. Generally, this variation makes the determination of the electric field set up by the surface charge very difficult. However, the electric field just outside the surface of a conductor is easy to determine using Gauss law. E, just outside, just outside the conducting surface. This is a conducting, okay. We want it just outside. What is the E at uh, this point? So we make a Gaussian surface as a cylinder, a set of both sides. One end is in the conductor, one end is the position. I want to find the E. Okay. And we find out okay, uh, perpendicular to the surface of conductor. This is E, okay, by symmetry reason. Two, Non-uniform distribution because the charge density are not the same, uh, basically. Okay. So it's non-uniform. Okay. But anyway, if we do this uh, Gaussian surface, we will see that one. E perpendicular this surface. So E perpendicular to this surface too. E perpendicular. 
and E parallel to DA because DA is perpendicular to the surface. Now, this flux only saw the external end phase. Inside, E equals zero, which is increasing down that. On the surface, E parallel to axis, DA perpendicular to the surface, so E dot DA equals zero. They perpendicular. So only this surface, where we want to find the E, you have a flux. Okay? Uh, then this way, E parallel to DA, E dot DA equal to E DA. And E is constant in this very tiny one, take it out. And the Q enclosed is this one. This one. It's charge density sigma multiplied by this area, DA. Uh, the A. So A cancel out E near the Conducting surface is sigma of epsilon zero. Uh, this also we have to remember. It will be different from the E in the, near the non-conductor surface. Sample. Fix shows a cross section of a spherical metal shear of inner radius r. A point charge of minus five point o microcoulomb is located at a distance half r from the center of the shear. If the shear is electrically neutral, the shear, what are the induced charges on the inner and outer surface? Are those charges uniformly distributed? What is the fuel pattern inside and outside the shear? Now, let's see that one. Let's make a Gaussian surface is a sphere inside the ship. We know this conductor, so inside it is E equal to zero. Right? E equal to zero. So that means, okay, E dot DA integration is zero. And that means inside the shear, the net charge is zero. Now, you have a charge minus five mu C. So you must have another positive 5 mu c, make it zero. Where is it? It's the inner surface, okay? It's not uniform dispute, right? Second, this shear itself originally is neutral. Now inside you have positive 5 mu, mu c, so another minus 5 mu c is spread uniformly outside. And it's uniform distributed. Why? This is not uniform. This is uniform because we have this E equal to zero. Uh, the charge outside does not know what happened inside because it was screened, screened by this one. So outside is uniform distributed. We will use this electroscope to show that electric fields are affected by a conductive metal screen. If a positively charged rod is brought near the electroscope, the electric field of the rod attracts negative charges to the top of the support arm. That leaves a net positive charge on the bottom half, which deflects the pointer. We'll place this grounded metal cage over the top of the electroscope and repeat the demonstration. What will happen when we bring the charged rod near the electroscope? There is no deflection at all. The electric field of the charged rod cannot penetrate the metal screen. These metal cages are called Faraday cages. When an operating radio is placed inside the metal cage with a large mesh, the intensity of the signal is reduced due to the partial blocking of the electromagnetic radiation by the cage. When the cage of fine mesh is placed over the radio, the signal intensity is reduced even more.